One of the most popular and well-known movie villains in the history of Dragon Ball Z is back on the big screen in Dragon Ball Super Broly as Toriyama takes a hand at writing the character. So today I think it would be fun to go back and look at the classic 13 Dragon Ball Z movies from the very first one Dead Zone to movie 13 known in the US as Wrath of the Dragon and tell you my top 5 favorite Dragon Ball Z movie villains. Let's get to the list next. This video is sponsored by Honkai Impact 3, the mobile game that fuses my love of video games and anime together. It's a hack and slash RPG with an incredible storyline where you can customize your characters, then go into combat, raise your levels up, and unlock new features. This game looks and feels like it shouldn't even be a mobile game. It looks like a damn console game. There is so much to do and so many rewards in this game that you will literally lose hours playing this thing. You can perform combos and evade during battle, hit the enemies with a special move, and fight your way through to unlock more characters in this game known as Valkyries. I will leave a link down below so you can check out Honkai Impact 3 and try it out today because they're always adding new stuff including a brand new mini game called the Dorm Game where you actually build your own room for all your Valkyries and you can customize the room and use it to build up weapon experience for your Valkyries. So it's a game within a game but it affects the main game. Check it out, I'll leave the link down below. Before we begin, I want to say that this list is going to cover only the original 13 Dragon Ball Z theatrical motion pictures. It will not be covering Battle of Gods or Resurrection F. It will obviously not be covering Broly, the new Broly movie. And it obviously will not be covering the Bardock and Trunk specials because they are not movies. They are TV specials that air during the TV run of Dragon Ball Z in between two respective episodes of the series. But even if they were on the list, the villains of those two specials is Frieza and the androids, which are main continuity villains anyway. So we're going to examine the characters created by Takao Koyama for the original 13 DBZ movies. And don't forget, this is of course my opinion. These are my favorite villains from the films. If you disagree with me, that is A-OK. -okay. I would love to hear your opinions on who your top five favorite movie villains are. Leave them down below and I'd love to read them and get your thoughts and your perspectives because I find that stuff to be very interesting. So let's get right to the list here. Number five, counting down, is the last villain of the last original Dragon Ball Z movie that was in theaters during the original Dragon Ball Z run and that is Hirudegarn. I really like Hirudegarn because even though he's just a monster and doesn't really speak, that's kind of what makes him unique. He just doesn't talk. He's a big, giant sort of, you know, kaiju monster that the Z Fighters have to face off against in a city. And I always wanted them to do something like that, you know, being a big fan of kaiju monsters like Godzilla and Gamera and whatnot, and them doing a DBZ movie where they have to face off against this big creature who's also really powerful, so strong that he was able to knock Gotenks SS3 out and defuse in one shot is very, very impressive. I also love the design of the monster, how he has sort of that skeleton form, then he will mutate into his flying form, and he also breathes fire. You know, Hirudegarn was a really, really fun villain, maybe not the best character, but a fun sort of monster that the Z Fighters had to overcome. Plus, I really, really love his backstory. Same with the backstory of Tapion, which go hand in hand. I always was a fan of how this Dragon Ball Z movie, Movie 13, was able to expound the world of Dragon Ball and the universe to make it bigger. We found out about the sorcerers and the wizards of the planets in the South Galaxy and all these things that I think were really, really cool and gave Hirudegarn and Tapion a great backstory. So Hirudegarn being so unlike the other DBZ villains, I think to me is perfect for number five on the list. Number four on the list, counting down, is the villain from Dragon Ball Z Movie 2, Dr. Wheelow or Dr. Weedo. Now, for those who don't know, the world's strongest, the second Dragon Ball Z movie, is actually my favorite of the original 13 films. If you include Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, it's actually my second favorite. I do enjoy this movie more than Resurrection F, for various reasons I'll get into in a video some other time. But the villain of this film I really enjoy because 
He's this crazy scientist who was essentially blacklisted from the scientific community and people thought he was dead and to get his revenge, he's created these biomechanical fighters, but it's not enough. He wants the body of the strongest man in the world and that is, of course, Son Goku. Originally in the film, he thought it was Master Roshi, but that's because he'd been in confinement for so long, he didn't know that the world had sort of evolved past Roshi. But I love this character, and I love how he's a pretty much a big giant brain, you know, inside of a of the wall for most of the film, and then you find out he actually has, like, a mechanical body, and when he comes out, there's that awesome scene with the electricity shooting everywhere. Like, you know, Dr. Wheelow had this really overwhelming presence about him in the film. I really like that, and I feel like this character is one of the more underrated villains by the fandom. Number three on the list is the opposite of underrated. Yes, folks, number three is Broly. And of course, we're talking about the original Takao Koyama conception of Broly, which is from the first three Broly movies, movie eight, movie 10, and movie 11. Now, just a little asterisk here. Technically, Bio Broly is not Broly. He is a clone of Broly that was made in the laboratory. If you want to count him as Broly, that's up to you, but he's not the original Broly. So, the reason why Broly's number three is because, let's be honest, the first Broly movie, although the first half of it can be a little a little bit long-winded, it still has a really cool backstory with Paragus appearing and coercing the Saiyans about the new planet Vegeta and really fooling Vegeta to get his revenge manipulating Broly. I thought that was actually a really cool idea and something very unique. And I love that Broly eventually breaks from his shackles and goes absolutely nuts and it takes everyone, four Super Saiyans and a Super Namekian to take this guy down. And let's not forget how awesome the fight scenes were in the first movie because they looked incredible. Now in the second and third Broly movies, not really a big fan of the way he was there, but he was still a big powerful presence throughout the film and definitely a character that was portrayed as being scary, frightening, and one that our heroes feared. So even if you don't like Broly and he's not your favorite, he is, to me, one of the better Dragon Ball Z movie villains. And obviously he's popular enough that he keeps getting brought back over and over and over again, including nowadays in the modern era. And yeah, his backstory does leave a lot to be desired. It's kind of dumb as far as why he hates Kakarot so much. But his backstory with his father, I think, is very interesting. And I think that he is cool to see go out there and just ripping people apart. But a lot of that does have to do with how great they designed the fight scenes for that film. Either way, though, Broly is my third favorite. And I think that they will hopefully give him a better backstory, a more interesting one, in the film which, as of this recording, has not been released yet. So, who are my two favorite Dragon Ball Z movie villains from the original 13 movies? Well, number two is Frieza's brother, Cooler. I absolutely love Cooler to death. I think that Cooler is really one of the better Takao Koyama creations. He, you know, is this guy who comes off sort of humble, a lot more humble than Frieza, a lot more mature than Frieza, but he still has an ego. And even though he really masked his ego inside and you really don't see it come out till close to the end of the first movie. It's definitely there and he's very overconfident and it winds up, you know, costing him at the end of the day. I love Cooler's design in both forms that we see in the movies and I even love Meta Cooler. Even though that movie has a lot of issues, the whole concept behind the big Getty star fusing with his dead corpse and kind of giving him this new life as being part machine to me is one of the coolest, no pun intended, ideas that they have. And yeah, it's totally a ripoff of Star Trek. I mean, it's pretty much V'ger and the Borg combined, you know, in a way with a Dragon Ball Z twist. But I love the fact that he comes back back like this with this upgraded meta cooler body and I love how he appears with millions upon millions of other coolers you know I thought that was so awesome seeing that scene with them coming over the mountain and just he's back to being overconfident in that second movie and he also learns how to do the instantaneous movement which I thought was very cool as well I think cooler is a character that I wish Toriyama would get his hands on and I wish that he would kind of do something with Toriyama did help design cooler of course and I always felt like he was a very simple character but one that I think is really interesting and again opens up the lore of Dragon Ball yes Frieza has a father in the movie universe he also has an older brother and I like that idea a lot so who is my number one who is my absolute favorite Dragon Ball Z movie villain 
it's gotta be Janemba. And I'll be honest, this is entirely based on his abilities and his look. I hate to say, I know it sounds like a Vince McMahon thing, but he really has no personality. He is the pure personification of evil. And there are other villains that kind of have no personality either, like Slug and Bojack for sure. And even Android 13 has no personality. The dub tried to give him one and didn't really work out. But with uh, with Janimba, he's so much more amazing because he is a Majin Buu clone in his first form. He's the big baby, you know, able to kind of bend reality to his will in the other world. And I thought that was cool. But once he transforms to that final form where he looks like the devil, you know, and he has a sword and he can, you know, rip holes in time space. This is one of the greatest things they've ever done in Dragon Ball Z movies. And the reason why Fusion Reborn is such a beloved movie is not just because of of Gogeta. It's because of Janimba. And I did a video a long time ago where I discussed, you know, what would happen if Janimba was actually like he actually had his own arc. And they would have to change a lot of things and, you know, make it bigger and whatnot. But I think that if they took the concept of Janimba, who can manipulate and destroy the other world and bend it to his will, and put him into the main I guess, continuity or give him a, a longer arc, I think it would be a great freaking idea because I think Janimba is awesome. So that's my favorite. Janimba is my favorite Dragon Ball Z villain, and he's just he's just awesome, dude. I love him, and that's my list. So let me know your list down below in the comments. And again, if you don't agree, that's fine. That's cool. No pun intended. Let me know what you think. Hope you all have a great day. I look forward to reading your replies down below. Catch you down the road.